with the finest hour, the shade of coward. You were soured and now you're showered and empowered. Sooner or later, you need a favor. Be free of haters, educator. Giving my testimony just minutes later. Move your soul like the Holy Ghost. With a faithful note and yeah, my quotes. Lifting your spirit higher than any rope. I be the reason that you're believing and taking stands. We the man, more this freedom. So why you want us banned? We have a voice of our own. You're hearing angry tones. Looking for some justice, must have had it postponed. Need a shoulder to lean. That goes for any means. Yeah, I'm here to uplift more than just your self esteem. I'm a dreamer, the future is never out of reach. And I at least the fear of hope the Pope would say I'm beast. Every day is a test, so bring your A game. And if not, I'll take blame and push you well beyond pain. I do this all for you, I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you, I stood my ground for you. I do this all for you, I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you, I stood my ground for you. I do this all for you, I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you, I stood my ground for you. Tears been shed, it led to a depression. Progression is what's ahead. Struggle can be a blessing, a lesson for your survival. A rival can make a move, and it's never cool to be idle. Look in the mirror and see yourself at your worst, and you're working to show your worth, and you're witness a rebirth. You're not alone, and that never should be an issue. Roll with the ones who with you, the others are superficial. Continue to be yourself, and no like you will either diss you. You in the moment, so go and own it. There's no opponent or component stopping your fight, so please go and show it. I got a purpose for people looking for something new I promise you I'll give you perspective and give you wider views say you will and I will let's make a final vow we'll go that extra mile the fan would love to see you smile honestly it's been a while letters in a big pile no shame in a stumble we all have our flaws when a draw I'm cheering for you to be a superstar the world's clapping and giving a confirmation the nation has got your back a true standing ovation I do this all for you I'm working hard for you I put it down for you I stood my ground for you I do it's all for you, I'm working hard for you, I put it down for you, I stood my ground for you, I do this all for you, I'm working hard for you, I put it down for you, I stood my ground for you. Let em out. I will, 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 I do this all for you. I made a promise from me and you, and I plan to keep it. I made a promise to all the fam, and I plan to keep it. I made a promise to all my friends, and I plan to keep it. I made a promise to mankind, and I plan to keep it. I will, I will, I will. I will see it through. I made a promise to you. I will, I will, I will see it through. I made a promise to you. I will, I will, I will see it through. I made a promise to you. I will, I will, I will see it through. I made a promise to you. I do this all for you. I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you. I stood my ground for you. I do this all for you. I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you. I stood my ground for you. I do this all for you. I'm working hard for you. I put it down for you. I stood my ground for you. I will, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will. I will, I will, I will. I do this all for you. This podcast is brought to you from our sponsors. Hey guys, if you have not heard about Anchor, it's a free way to make a podcast anywhere and at any time. And guess what? It's free 99. There are all types of built-in creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so you can be heard on a multitude of platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. Now, I know what you may be thinking, but Brandon, why in the world would I create a podcast? Okay, so let me tell you. First of all, it starts with an M and it ends with a Y. It's called money. So why would you be asking me why you don't want to make money? Yes, I said it because you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. So there you go. Stop thinking about it and just download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I did, and so can you. Woo! 
welcome to another explosive episode of the Start Thinking Forward Morning Motivational Show. I'm your host, Brandon L. Draper, and you can check me out on Instagram at The Real Motivational King. I'm excited that you decided to rise above the noise and tune into this positive vibration of intellectual content. I don't take it lightly, though, that you're here. And in order for us to continue to give you nonstop impactful content, I need your help. So hit that like button and subscribe to whatever platform that you're listening to this podcast on. And most importantly, share this message of hope and inspiration. With that being said, let's get on with the show. All right, guys, we're going to be starting with the 12 start thinking forward tips to starting a business and what exactly does that mean? So oftentimes people are, you know, trying to figure out how to start a business. They may have read some articles. They may have looked at some videos. They may have gotten input from a a multitude of people from the previous employer, whatever the case may be. They're trying to figure out how to create that business. So we have created 12 steps that show you how to start a business, right? So these are basic, basic foundational steps that you need to do. The thing about it is if you miss these crucial steps, you don't make the change and don't position yourself correctly in this, it can lead to the demise of your business further down the road. So first and foremost, we're going to talk about change. Right. And the story that I want to share with you today is a story about a blind girl. There was a blind girl who hated herself purely for the fact she was blind. The only person she didn't hate was her loving boyfriend, as he was always there for her. She said that if she could only see the world, she would marry him. One day, someone donated a pair of eyes to her. Now she could see everything, including her boyfriend. Her boyfriend asked her, now that you can see the world, will you marry me? The girl was shocked when she saw that her boyfriend was blind too and refused to marry him. Her boyfriend walked away in tears and later wrote a letter to her saying, just take care of my eyes, dear. The moral of the story is this. When our circumstances change, so does our mind. Some people may not be able to see the way things were before and may may not be able to appreciate them. There are many things to take away from this story, not just one. So think about that change and really understanding that we can sit on this podcast and talk about feelings, emotions. We can talk about business. We can talk about all this stuff and it can be great ideas, but if we can never take anything and create action, where you can actually get results from that action. What are we talking about? So part of part of the main concept of entrepreneurship is that I have to realize that sometimes we are all at different points in our journey. And sometimes we have to be conditioned to, to be able to get to the next level. So meaning, you know, we might be somewhere and we don't know what we don't know. So People, other people like myself have to come in and say, hey, look, here are some other ideas and strategies that you can use, that you can implement that's going to help your business along the way. Right. And when you look at it like that, you start to say, OK, what can I learn? What experience I'm going to gather from this? So we're going to talk about some steps that you're going to need to do when it comes to starting a business. One of the first things I want to talk about, in my opinion, is that you got to evaluate yourself, right? And this is straight off of entrepreneur.com. You know, these are are, 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 are this ways of breaking it down on best practices of things that you need in order to be self-sufficient. So number one, it says evaluate yourself. Right. You got to evaluate yourself. Uh, what school, what skills do you have? Um, where does your passion lie? Are you uh, solely re- 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 uh, relying on your passion, believing that that's going to pay you right now, that that's going to be able to take care of your bills right now? Um, what are the areas of expertise do you have? Right. Are you going to need capital 
or not? Where are you at? Do you have people already lined up to give you money uh, that's willing to invest in you? Right. That's something you need to, to go through. That's that part of that evaluation uh, stuff. Uh, what sort of lifestyle do you want to live currently at this moment and, and later currently? OK, do, do I have to downsize? Right. Me starting this business. Am I going to have to downsize in order to do that? So that so all these questions come in. This is a part of that e- evaluation. You know, this becomes a part of your decision making process. You have to decide what is what and how you're going to do it based on where you're at in your life. Right. You know, what skills do you have? What skills will you need? Right. If you don't have those skills, are you willing to partner with someone that does? This is a part of that evaluation phase. Right. You know, what areas of expertise do you have? What extra what areas of expertise do you need? Right. Right. Once again, who are you going to partner with? Who are you going to do MOUs? For those that are understand MOUs, Memorandum of Understandings. How are you going to build capacity for your organization if you start one? Right. These are the questions that you have to keep continuously going over. All right. Are you ready to be a, in business for yourself? Right. If you're if you're starting a nonprofit, are you ready to start this nonprofit? Do you understand the laws and the taxes and all those things that go along with that? If you're a for profit business. Right. Are you ready to to face that and having to do payroll and workman's comp and all these different things that come along with starting a business? If that's the type of business you're trying to run. Right. Those are all the thoughts and ideas that you have to really go through. And I'm just, I'm just named a couple of industries there that those questions may come up in their mind, but that's what they do. They have to evaluate themselves. You got to evaluate yourself, right? Think of a business idea if you already have it. So now it's the time to look at one thing, you know, and, and I'm just going on a limb here because I got to be honest about something when it comes to everyone likes to it's a common word practice passion 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 one thing i know about passion if you have the passion to do something right does not mean that it will pay you right just just out the gun it does not guarantee right there's no guarantee just because you have a passion for something that it's going to pay you a dime there's no guarantees on that Right. Oftentimes I find out when you go after passions, it does not pay you right away. That does not that's not a indicator that your passion is wrong. It doesn't fit. It just doesn't pay. That's just that's just the laws of nature in that in that aspect is that it may just not pay you right away. Right. So you got to think of an idea that's going to be profitable for the business itself. Make sure it's profitable for you. And if you got other investors that's a part of whatever it is, business operation that you're running, that they are happy as well, you know, that they're getting a return on that. So you got to look at the profitability of the business right now. Some people may disagree with that, and that's OK. You know, there's a, a lot of different perspectives on that. Right. I would say that no one's necessarily right. No one's necessarily wrong is based upon each in everyone's individual situation. So what my what I may be telling you may work for a certain type of person, but if a person was in another situation, that same advice or direction wouldn't work out for them. So that's why we always say this is not advice. This is just an opinion, right? This is not telling you to do or or, or go out and and you know get yourself into a very bad situation, right? You have to think this out. You have to come up with a strategy. You have to strategize and plan. This is chess, not checkers, right? You're going to have to plan out your moves. You're going to have to be 8, 10, 15 moves ahead on the board. You're setting up a plan. That's what a business is. It's not just, I want to go out and be, you know, Billy Bad, but, you know, I want to do something different. I want to be radical. I want to do something no one would ever think that I would do, right? I need a little bit of excitement in my life. You don't want to do that just for that. You want to do that because you're truly convicted of the idea that you're talking about. You're not trying to to have a, you know, for for the sake of words, a, a midlife crisis 
and you decide, yeah, just overnight, I'm going to start this business that I have not had no idea of, have not done any market research, you know, don't know if I'm going to need capital, how hard it is to find retail spot or a lease spot to do it, right? Am I going to be able to still maintain my current lifestyle or will I have to downsize until the business takes off? How long is the business going to take off? Is it going to be two to three years or is it going to be more closer to five to seven or maybe seven to ten? These are things that people don't consider when they start a business. They just let me go do it. So then when we look at the research and the research is indicative of, of people that get into business and get out of business, they, they fail. The reason I believe, personal opinion, is that most businesses fail because they haven't done the research of it. And, you know, the research always tends to be to the profitability of it. But what about those other checks that you need? And in, in, in order for those things to be able to function, because a business is like a weld oil machine. Each part feeds into another that allows the machine to move. So if you if you've done real well on this part, but everything else on this side is rusty, eventually the part that you do have together is going to start eroding as well. So you want to make sure that you have a sound idea, business idea. Right. Um, You ask yourself, you know, are you solving a problem? If you can solve a problem, problem solvers get paid. You know, problem finders, they they find themselves in an un, unemployment line, right? Problem solvers get paid the most. They're always going to get paid the most. People always, always looking to invest in people that can solve problems. So if you come up with an idea around a business that solves a big enough problem that people are willing to pay for it, Right? That people are willing to pay for the idea that you're talking about. That they see that there is a problem and they're willing to pay if you can show them systematically on how to solve that. Right. And I don't want to go too much in detail further than what we are because we're on a limited time here. And I see the most likely I'm going to have to make a, a, a probably a video or put this on one of the flagship shows, our Wednesday Hump Day Motivational Show or our Friday show, because I know a lot of people want to learn this, right? These are things that I had to learn the hard way in business, right? The next thing we're going to talk about and is do market research. Number three, do market research, right? Why is it important to do market research? Everyone thinks it's the, it's the clear obvious. All you want to know You know, what's the market looking like? You know, what's the feasibility of this product selling on the open market? Right. That's why you want to do market research. Right. Also, you know, what's going to be the acquisition of the product? Right. Just not doing it. Just not doing the research to find out if people willing to buy it. How much is going to cost you to produce it? How much is going to cost you to market it? Does that make sense for the opening price that you're going to present it to the open market? Maybe, maybe you finding that out determines if you're going to bring that idea even to the market, because guess what? If you bring that idea to an investor and they immediately see that it's going to cost more to bring it to market and there's no sure way of making any type of returns, if you even break even at all, what are the chances that an investor would invest in you? And that's now that's if you're competing at a level that they even tell you what your mistake was. Right. So if you're competing in an environment, they're not even telling you what you're doing wrong. Now, you can go through 10, 20 different investors or sponsors that normally would probably sponsor you. But because you're presenting it wrong, because you've missed a critical part. So it could have been another idea twisted in a different way that could yield the results. But because you didn't bring that to it as if it was a shortcoming that you did not identify in your own research, they're not willing to invest in you. Because if you're willing to do mess up that early on in the project or the idea of the business, well, I don't think that uh, we're a good fit because most likely something this small in the entry level, you're messing that up. You're most likely going to come on this side and make some 
catastrophic errors that's going to cost us our bottom line as investors. And I mean, other than a great idea, there's nothing, you know, really to, to, to talk about. And so, and this, and this think about that as far as that market research, all that stuff comes uh, to the bottom line of negotiation. Right now I'm taking a negotiations classes and it's a negotiation and strategic playbook for becoming a principal and persuade persuasive negotiator and that's through Yale University and everything comes down to the pie so when you're doing that market research what's up for grabs is the pie like what's the total sum of us uh getting something greater together than apart right so understanding all your ideas and and your research has to come together in a way that it stands for people like investors to connect with your organization to give it money even though on their own they got money they can they can make a, a return but with your organization they can make a return that may yield higher and may yield higher quicker Right. So that's the reason why they're willing to come on with you. You got to understand that part of negotiation and being able to negotiate that. Now, I understand a lot of people don't even talk about this part. You're negotiating from the beginning of this thing, because understanding that if you want to get to the table with the investor, you got to get to the table with the investor. What I mean by that, meaning that you got to be talking to the investor on paper as if you were there in person. Right. What that means is that you got to you got to communicate in a way that's not saying I'm not asking I'm negotiating why you should do this. What make what what advantages are you going to gain as a result of this? Right. You're going to disclose to them their pie that they may not even seem was even in play that gives them more of a reason to be synergized to connect with you. Right. So do the market research. And I don't want to take up too much time. Next thing is get feedback. All right. Let people interact with your product, your service, your brand and, and, and let them take it in. Right. Right. Have a fresh set of eyes on whatever it is you're creating. You come up with this great idea. Let people pick and choose and see things. You ultimately have the decision at the end. But remember, you're not your ideal client. Most likely. But most of us, we're not an ideal client. We're not that person that would. We're creating something. Right. So unless you you yourself or your ideal client, same age group, read the same things, do the same things, participate in the same events. Right. We have the same lifestyle. We use the same medications. If we use whatever that is. Right. You want to identify with that audience. Right. Particularly if that audience is someone that would buy your product or service. If that's not your audience, get feedback, get feedback often. Right. Because you want to know how other people's perception, how they perceive your brand, how they perceive your company and your business. This is going to give you a leg up on a lot of other things. It's going to give you the momentum you need to get your business going to the next level, like getting funded or what have you. Right. And I don't want to go through every single step, um, but the next one. Uh, I do want to go through all, all 12 of these, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on all on this segment. All right. So the next thing is make it official. I oftentimes watch so many people, they have some great ideas, but they never get official. Right. What do I mean by official? Meaning that you can put ink, you can put LLC behind your name. You can create a brand name and put the R registered and put TM by it. If it looks good in appearance, but it absolutely means nothing. If you have not done the paperwork, you can't trade just because you put trademark on your logo as if it is. And it's not does not stop someone from, from getting that copyright, you know, and using it. Now it might be up because you were using it first. And that's what this stuff always comes down to is how long it's been there. Who's used it the longest, whatever, whatever. All right. So you want to make it official. Number one, if you what business structure, LLC, corporation, S Corp, what is it that you're going to be? Go to the state, your local secretary of state. Um, if you're in the U.S. and if you're overseas, um, I know we have a good good bit of following from uh, Australia. Um, 
So, and also Switzerland. Uh, so I would say, you know, find out from your local municipal uh, municipality and, and see what requirements it is to form a legal corporation, right? If you're in the U.S., you know, get your business name, register that name. Well, you don't have to register it. Once you put it with Secretary of State, you can do a simple search to make sure that name is not available, right? You can simply do that. Uh, make sure the name is not available. Uh, and usually you come up with a search, you know if it's not, and then you submit. If any type of issues come up, they're going to send you a message back telling you what needs to be corrected on that in order for them to file it. Um, uh, then, you know, get a federal uh, tax ID, which is EIN number. Um, a lot of times people have to get a state tax ID, so which is more like a, a exercise tax or a, uh, a sales tax. Um, license or what have you may need to get that if especially if you're selling apparel or a uh, clothes decorator or whatever or, or those type of categories right um, you may have to get specialized licenses and things like that but usually the articles and corporations any EI number will suffice for you to be able to open up a bank account some banks require you to have um, what do you call bylaws so, and some, some do. So basically you have to create some corporate bylaws that's outlining everyone's position, who does what, when, and how, right? So it's very important um, about that part of business. So real quick, uh, we got up to number five. Uh, we're going to go ahead to a real quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to be picking up with number six, right? Your business plan, right? It's one of the most important things you need to worry about when you're creating a business. So we'll be right back at this commercial break. As a need for catharsis Since I never saw reason for speaking speeches of sparseness Was only cool with select few people and targets Cause I felt the average person was evil and heartless Attitude was reticent But raps I brewed were eloquent I snapped into my elements What I had to do was evident My aptitude was prevalent Which begun my ascension To a class of my own Like the only one in detention But I'm running from questions like What do I expect? From rapping maybe a benign butterfly effect But these thoughts of lofty mission don't come often See, I'm trying to draft new plots of spitting like a young rock king Never done rocking Matter of fact, I haven't started yet Still building my foundation with the mind of an architect I know it's hard to get But I chase my dreams of bold intentions While these fake thugs can't see my bars Cause they have no conviction Yet the future got me stressing I'll be someone seldom seen But then it hit me in a mellow dream A mellow dream that likes a marathon So pain happens to be a welcome theme So be easy, like a mellow dream A mellow dream, the future got me stressing and I'll be someone seldom seen But then it hit me in a mellow dream A mellow dream that likes a marathon So pain happens to be a welcome theme So be easy, like a mellow dream A mellow dream It's been a little bit too long Dealing with the setback Feeling like my head's trapped Right in, in the middle of the page Full of lesson apps All I want to do is write brand new songs I don't want to wonder what it's like to live free So I'm keeping my mind on that A planned job isn't going to give me relief From the weight on my back So my spine don't snap now Playing with the cars that I'm dealt, dealt, dealt. Taking on the bars that I felt frustrated with the lack of place when I pass bad days, thinking how's my art gonna sell. sell. But it's all good, I'm rapping for the love. A regular guy, not a trapper or a thug. I relate to the people and say they were equal. My pain isn't lethal, I'm happy as a mug when it comes to doing music. Or I'm talking to my wife. I'm learning how to use it to start stomping out my strife. Using facets of the classics to add backgrounds to my raps. I'm finding wealth and living true, even though pockets feeling light. No desire to be wealthy, it's not a drastic thing. But there's fire in my belly and I'm spitting gasoline. See, my plan is sound, command the crowd. With with honesty and truth while standing out so slam the cloud this product for the youth so if the future got you stressing you'll be someone seldom seen it's gonna hit you in a mellow dream a mellow dream that life's a marathon so pain happens to be a welcome theme so be easy like a mellow dream a mellow dream the future got you stressing you'll be someone seldom seen it's gonna hit you in a mellow dream a mellow dream that life's a marathon so pain happens to be a welcome theme so be easy like a mellow dream a mellow dream a mellow dream yeah. Uh. Keep calm and dream on, you know. 
Hey guys, real quick, I got a question for you. Have you ever wanted to be a risk taker? I mean, wanted to invest in yourself so bad, but just didn't know where to start, who to ask, how to move. Have you ever just wanted to share your story, lessons that you've learned along the way, or perhaps some sort of trauma you've witnessed or went through yourself, and you know that if you were to share that story, that testimony that you have within yourself, that it would be able to free some people, be able to help some people to go help them get through whatever it is that they're going through right now. But you feel as if you really and truly don't have a voice. How many people right now feel the same way that they don't have a voice, but maybe if you're strong enough to step up to the plate, you don't know how many hundreds, thousands, or even millions. See, someone looked at President Obama, someone looked at Martin Luther King and they believed them. And when that person said that to them, they actually believed that they could do it. So I'm challenging you and telling you, I believe that you can do it because so many people take their story of triumph over adversity to the grave, never to be exhumed. And I don't want that to happen to you. And I refuse to let it happen to me. They always say the quickest way to find your purpose is to get around people that have found theirs. So right now, I challenge you to give us an opportunity to help you share your story with the world if you so dare to step up to the plate. I don't care if it's fiction, nonfiction, drama, business, leadership, poetry, memoirs, you name it. There's a place for you here at Pinnacle Point Publishing. So connect with us online at www.pinnaclepointpublishing.com or give us a call at 1-866-222-3940. And back to the show. Here we go. All right, we're back. So I hope you enjoyed that commercial break. So we're going to start right where we uh, left off at, and that was writing your business plan. Now, (laughs) there's so many different resources when it comes to writing a business plan. And, you know, sometimes, you know, business plans can be a little long. And, most people won't even read half of it. And an innovative, you know, smart-minded CEO is going to see past just a well-prepared, you know, business plan that has no practical approach in the real world. So you can have something that's really polished up, um, but it's just like, you know, cleaning up garbage cans, still putting the garbage in them, but having them real shiny, you know, get as many as those little you know, incense triangles, a little uh, incense trees or whatever. Get as many of those as you can to put it all inside of it, spray it all down. It looks real good, but if it sits there long enough, it's garbage. (laughs) It's going to start smelling the place up. So you got to understand your business plan is important, but don't think that, you know, quantity is going to win the it's going to win the marathon here, right? It's not. It is it, it's, it's going to be the quality, short, concise, to the point, and lays out some of the you know major aspects of it. a lot of times where they want to start really looking engaging is looking at your executive summary, right? You know, looking at that executive summary, right? What are the touching points? Your company's description, the problem the business is, you know. Is saying that they want to solve the solution, why, right? And how how they're going to make investors feel comfortable with this. That's what that executive summary is, is pretty much saying. So that to me is a summation of what I really need to know coming into the game. And if you can't capture my attention here, right? I don't even want to even see your pitch. Because most, most of the people that look, they may look at, you know, um, the business description, 
Um, definitely the marketing strategies. They're going to skim these things for the most part because at the end of the day, they feel as if they have enough understanding of business that, you know, all that stuff is just fluff anyway. They know that. So they know what works. They know based upon research and if they're not familiar with that particular area, right, they're going to get back to it, right? But, you know, but also that that can also be a bad thing if if you're presenting a concept that you believe is a new wave of thinking and they don't even know what it is. They may not fund you just on that, right? Like, hey, here you're coming with something that we absolutely know nothing about. What is this? Right. Just like now you're seeing the wave of um, seeing VR technology kind of pick up a little bit. Right. So those are things where it just gradually gets introduced. Right. So getting back to the executive summary, they want to see how it touches them. You know, they want to see your business description and they definitely want to see your marketing strategies. Right. Right. And next thing, competitive analysis. Have you looked at the competition? Do you see what your competition is? Is there anyone in the market right now? If you get in the market, how soon do you think someone will get in the market after you? You know, is this going to be a trend? You know, how long is the market gap? You know, how long from the time we start till we actually get a first competitor into the market? That could be, you know, two months from the time we really hit mainstream or it can be, you know, 20 years. Right. Of just this running, doing something for a long period of time and having absolutely no competition and having a whole lot of clients who wouldn't want that for a business. Right. So all these things come into to a picture design and develop the development plan. Right. You know, those things are, yeah, you know, you're talking about the the things that every business has to done. Operation and management plan. Yeah. You know, those are the things that every business has to do. So they're not going to spend too much time there. I mean, that's a given, right? So that's just there to say, hey, you know what you're doing. But, you know, and then, oh, yeah. Then comes that financial factors. You know, they always wait to talk about the money at the end. But but the money really is to be number one because that's everyone's main priority. Profit and nonprofit is because there's no, in the nonprofit world, there's no mission without the money, right? And we can't, as CEOs, we can't push our vision without the money. So financial factors is very important, you know, because we have a mission. See, at the end of the day, whether you're for profit or nonprofit, at the end of the day, it's about the mission. And the mission is the money. All right. <laughs> so I don't want to tell you different on that, guys. It's the money. So where's the money coming from? Right. When is it coming? How is it coming? You know, what sort of projections should you create and what should you take into consideration? Right. All these things are the things. Those are the most important things. Because that's what's going to get people to really come on board uh, as long as these principles that we talked about. Um, earlier are still there, you know, the executive summary, the business description, market strategies, competitive analysis, design and development plan. I said, yeah, you remember that that's just every business ha- got to have that operations management plan. Yeah, that's something every business. And we ain't worried about that. But let's talk about these finances, though. Right. So how astute are you with your finances? Right. How astute are you with how your business is going to grow in the future. Have you really laid out a plan for that? Or have you been just talking about it or living vicariously through someone else's YouTube video that's already done it? And you say, oh yeah, that's easy to do. I just haven't put it on paper yet. Well, put it on paper because they got theirs on paper and look at where they're at and you don't have yours on paper and you're still struggling with it, right? So that's a teaching point. Take that, make it real for yourself. Make everything real because the things that you're thinking about the most and worried about is not the things other people are worried about. You got to figure out how can you solve that problem because you're not your ideal client. What is every what is what is this product or service that I have that can solve these people's problems? There's 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 400 million of them. Right. (laughs) 
How, how do I find out which one is more willing to buy my product? Right? How? Do I got da- data on that? What data do I have to show that? If I can show data on how I'm going to get my customer base and I'm able to implement through obviously, you know, uh, beta test, A-B split test to know what delivery mode is delivering the most. And I'm talking in the, 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 the IT, the, you know, so, but these are technologies and things that you have to have in your, in your business from, from the basic level. Like you have to start implementing systems because the systems are what's going to make things that seem like they're so unmanageable, like figuring out the financial part of your business and how your business is going to create money. But because you strategically came up with a plan and knowing what are your profit centers, how many profit centers do you have? If you're an author, you know where I got my book. Okay. You're selling your book. Well, how do you sell your book? Well, I sell my book as a uh, print copy book. I also sell it as an ebook, right? So you sell as a print, you sell as an ebook. Do you sell as an audio book? Well, no, I don't. Well, that's a profit center right there that you can introduce in your business plan, right? What else, right? Well, because I'm an author and I have a book, well, I can create merch. Well, what type of merch? T-shirts, hats, socks, right? Those are my merch. So those are another profit center. Well, how much... Do you think, you know, a person in this arena doing that would make? Very easy. You get case studies on people that's either in your industry or similar industry. Study and see how they build their community and duplicate that in your business. How do you do that? Because think about it. If they have a winning concept on how to do it and they're still constantly growing, why would you not want to introduce that in your business? Introduce that in your business, duplicate that part of it, but then have your unique product and or service attached to it. A system is a system. System is a system. It's a funnel. Everyone's getting funneled into a direction, right? Everyone's getting funneled into a direction. Once you understand that in business, that everyone's getting funneled into a direction, you will understand your finances a lot better and you're able to come up with more um, creative ways of coming up with income. So, but in order for you to come up with these creative ways to do income, it's a matter of you having income. So you have to be able to convince other people why they should give you or why should they invest in your business or your idea enough for it. You know, do they trust you or, you know, you're going to get the money and run off somewhere. What are you going to do if they entrust you with the money? Are you really going to do what you said you were going to do? So that's an interesting point, you know, is is just thinking about that uh, for a second, but it's one of the most major important things that, you know, we say it's not on the forefront of our mind. We always say that CEOs always say, oh no, it's about the, you know, the end users, about the shareholders. But at the end of the day, it's about the bottom line. What are those financial factors? How are they going to be able to make more money than they're putting out, right? Quadruple, right? They want to get that money as fast as possible. Hey guys, on tomorrow, we're going to pick up on seven and that's financing your business. And I'm sorry about that because I mean, the day we're going a little over time, right? So we're going a little over time. So um, we're going to pick up Next week, uh, excuse me, tomorrow morning um, with the financing your business. So we're going to continue this uh, series here because I I think it's very important to really talk about strategies and things you need to do to be able to finance your business and to help it uh, grow. Um, Because if, if you're not able to finance your business, remember, there's no mission without the money. And that's on for-profit and non-profit. The mission of that for-profit company cannot accomplish its goal if money is always an issue. Money is just a tool that you use. You have enough of it to take care of whatever situations and problems that come your way. That's what it that's what it does. Right. Is, you know, so have lots of it. But at the same time, you know, understanding that is very important, very important. Right. 
understanding that financial part. And so many people, they go into it blind. I don't want you to go into it blind. So we're going to talk about that tomorrow morning. All right, we'll talk about that tomorrow morning. I do not want you to go into that situation blind. Oh man, I was tied up and gagged in that in that arena. So um, you do not want to get tied up uh, with that and not really knowing how to make money, creating um, or so-called income streams or what they call side hustles that just doesn't make sense, right? You know, sometimes it's stick to your guns, figure it out exactly what it is you want to do and figuring out how can you make that profitable right not all ideas are created equal that's just what it is i want to put that out you know not all ideas are created equal there's certain levels and certain you know certain levels people have to start right to build up their confidence so it's not about judging anyone you know where they wherever they it is that they got to start you know you got to remember we all once started not knowing anything when it comes to business life or anything Right. We all started not knowing anything. So it's not to judge anybody when they don't know something. And you're saying, well, man, why are we starting, you know, so so much at the basics here? I'm like, well, maybe, you know, I remember uh, I think it was uh, Coach Brown, who uh, coach uh, Shaquille O'Neal for so many years. I never forget the, the interview. It was on Success Magazine with Dan Harding. Um, support that, you know, get the CDs that come with them. And it was an interesting interview with uh, Coach Brown, who I uh, coached Shaquille O'Neal, um, with Darren Harding, and he, and he asked him, you know, what made him so good? Like, how, how was he able to produce, you know, uh, such a good players and stuff? And um, he just said he just got real good at doing the basics. Sometimes it's not about learning the most advanced things. Sometimes starting back at the basics allow us to build a strong foundation that when we start adding other things to it, it makes more sense to us. It's more common sense to us. It's more, it's easy for us to understand. So it all starts with a strong foundation. So, you know, some people feel that, well, I already know this stuff. I just haven't done it. Well, if you know it and haven't done it, right, that's the problem. You haven't done it. So if you haven't done it, you haven't done it. It doesn't matter if you know it, but haven't done it. You have to do it. Do it the right way. Start your business legitimately, right? Um, so we're going to talk about that um, tomorrow morning. Hey, guys, it's been great. I hope you learned something from this. Um, so I will see you guys tomorrow morning. Hello, all. Thank you for tuning in to another motivational show. I hope that you may have gained some insight from this show. But please, please, please don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay up to date with our daily dose of inspiration. And if you are a true risk taker and a fan of this show, please go to patreon.com forward slash creators united. That's Patreon P A. T R E O N dot com forward slash creators united, right? And support our show and get some behind the scenes information on how you can empower yourself, your family, and your business to new heights. And if you want to connect, we are available 24 7. You can check us out online at www pinnaclepointpublishing.com and you can chat with us or send us an email or you can send me a direct email at brandon at pinnaclepointpublishing.com or even give us a call on the horn as they say at 1-866-222-3940 and until next time I'll see you again